Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic who are doing well and today we've got another box office breakdown as Wonder Woman 1984 continues to plummet at the box office making barely any noise this weekend. And what is Deadline blaming it on in part? That's right, the US Capitol woes. Dear Lord, these people just cannot get politics out of anything for even five seconds. But before we begin this video, please be sure to smash the like button, smash the rumble button if you're watching over there. I also upload these videos over to Minds Plus. And also, please check out the links in the description of the video to find out ways that you can help support the channel, including, including now a cryptocurrency option for those that like to delve into crypto. There's a way to donate through crypto down in the description below, and also links to all of my various social media platforms, including Minds and also including Parler. Even though Parler will be going down as of tonight because of censorship, it will be back up, according to certain people, to be back up by sometime tomorrow, around noon or so. So if you are still looking to join over there, it is still there is still time to do that, and the platform should be back up, if not by tomorrow, then at least by the end of the week. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this bit of news here. As you can see, from Deadline, Wonder Woman 1984 continues to fall with only $3 million in its third weekend, blaming that, of course, on the pandemic. And yes, absolutely, it is true. They're blaming it on the U.S. Capitol woes. So on Wednesday, there was a protest. Some members of that protest got violent. And so they are just going ahead and they're going to... <laughs> They're going to uh, um, blame it on that. In fact, you can see there's uh, this, this extension called Crowd News. And it tells you what the political bias of any website is. And this one says that it leans left. I don't know. I think leaning left is being a little bit, uh, I think it's being a little bit too fair. But then then again, I digress. At least it's being honest that there is um, a lot of leftist uh, slant to this. All right. It goes on to say, even if there wasn't a pandemic, odds are this would still be a hard weekend at the domestic box office. What with all of the distraction that came out of our nation's capital this past week. Television news seem to be filled with enough suspense and cliffhangers with the capital insurrection. Insurrection! <laughs> Versus the big screen. As we all cling to our TV screens at home to witness how President Trump will leave office expectantly with chaos in tow. Dear Lord, they still have TDS. Even with the man being set to leave office, even with the Joe Biden administration literally less than two weeks away from taking over, they still obsess with it. They still get triggered by him, calling the event that happened on Wednesday an insurrection. No, no, no. It was a protest that had hundreds of thousands of people. And when you have hundreds of thousands of people in one location, you're going to have a bunch of asshats. And guess what? The asshats made their voices very heard. And of course, just like we've seen throughout the entire summer where they've said, no, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't tear down the entire Black Lives Matter movement. You can't tear down everyone because of a few bad actors. Oh, all of a sudden that goes out the window. And now because, <laughs> because of this capital insurrection, that's the reason why Warner 1984 is failing at the box office. Dear Lord, you shills, you nonsensical plebes, I don't know what else, what other word to say, asshats, that's a better word, over at Deadline, need to get your heads out of your asses, and seriously, check yourself in to get some psychiatric help for your TDS, because it is showing very massively the fact that you have to even bring that up in a box office report is ridiculous. You made me have to talk about the damn thing, and I didn't want to, but hey, it's right there in the damn article. Dear Lord. Anyway, Warner Brothers, Wonder Woman 1984, in its third weekend, continued to emulate the legs of a horror movie, down 45%, with 3 million at 2,218 theaters, running with 32.6 million in its entire domestic gross. It's quite clear that this movie isn't going to make the money that Tenet did stateside at 58 million, and we knew that all along as 60% of all movie theaters are shut down, including number one chain, number two chain, Regal, Pennsylvania, Colorado, reopened this past weekend, I heard. You heard? Isn't it kind of your job to know? Anyway, adding further insult to injury, I hear that after a dismal holiday period, some movie theaters have decided to close down and are skipping paying Warners on Wonder Woman 1984. That's how bad things are. The studio, which normally doesn't need to fight for its rental dollars, will need to do so now. So now you have theaters saying, screw you, Warner. We're screwed here. And guess what? You know what? I would say, good on you, movie theaters. Stand up to this. Say, I'm not paying you a damn thing. You assets in Hollywood are the ones that have been sitting on your movies, not allowing them to be released, which has caused for our businesses to be shut down, has caused for our businesses to lose countless amounts of money. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of blame to be left around here, right? There's a lot of blame that can be put on governors and mayors 
And all people that have been shoving these lockdowns down our throats, they are absolutely willing and should be blamed in this process as well. But also keep in mind that with the theaters that are opened, the only way for them to really stay afloat would be if the studios were actually playing along, when instead they're just delaying, 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 and all that's doing is really leaving people to say, I don't really want to go to the theater anymore, and now theaters are having to shut down because of it. When in the hell will these people, especially in Washington... And in Hollywood, finally realized that the only way to make things get any better economically is to reopen the damn economy. It's not hard. It's not difficult to understand. The Patty Jenkins directed sequel to uh, is in its 17th day of release, which means it has another two weeks before HBO Max takes the title off its streaming service and the movie plays for another 30 days. Wow, yeah, good luck with that. In movie theaters, Warner Media hasn't blared any numerical trumpets as to how Wonder Woman 94 did on HBO Max in regards to viewers and subscribers. I understand if there's anything positive to report, we'll hear about it on the next AT&T AT &T earnings call. But that's the thing is that they can spin it to be positive. Because there is no guarantee of a subscriber being someone that just joined so that they could watch that movie. And I imagine that they're going to spin the numbers to make it look better than what it actually is. When in reality, you have a film that at this point is still in the red. This film, I've updated the box office numbers. So as of today, it has made $131.5 million. Obviously, I still need to update this on the sheet too, as far as the date's concerned. But this is the current uh, worldwide data, as you'll see in the uh, deadline article as we get through, get closer to the end. It says here that right now, it's in the red $221 million. It is still $200 million plus in the red, meaning it has not made a damn dime for Warner Brothers yet at this point. It still has to owe. It still owes money back from the money that it invested in the film in the first place. That is not a good position to be in. And the whole oh, it'll be out of HBO Max in two weeks. Who's gonna see it? With theaters closing left and right, with no one wanting to go see it anyway, and also with a completely crap product to boot. Where in the hell do you think their money is going to be brought into? But I'm sure you'll at some point say, well, you know, it's all because of that. Man, if that capital insurrection hadn't happened, man, th then it would have been fine. Shut up, dear lord. These people are insufferable. It's ridiculous. All right, it goes on to say, still, if there was something awesome to shout out to the world about 184, we would have already heard about it. Good point. Social media analytic analytics core relish mix says, in regards to the sequel social media chatter, incremental mentions about HBO Max and connectivity issues are on Twitter and tapering, and COVID mentions are sprinkled across YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Worldwide, 184 stands at $131.5 $131 million. Tenant grossed 362.9. And it's impossible for Wonder Woman to even mirror those results. Most theaters in Europe remain closed or are operating with significant capacity restrictions. I will say this much, though. It's so interesting that this person is using this as an excuse when when Tenet came out, it had the same issues. You do realize that you had a lot of theaters still closed across the entire world when Tenet came out. Yes, yeah, sure, you can argue that they were in the process of reopening. But it didn't last very long, and you still had a lot of theaters closed, and all the theaters that were open were still cut to different types of capacities. But as we see constantly happening within the media, they will use every single excuse to explain why Warner Woman 1984 is failing. They'll use every excuse, all of which can also still apply to Tenet. Also, they can say it's not because the movie's bad. It's not because the movie has, you know, some wokeness in it. It's, be it's because of everything going on. It's because there's a pandemic. Didn't you realize that they stormed the Capitol? There was an insurrection that was quelled within an hour. Some insurrection. Good Lord, man, these people. Meanwhile, those movies which had a longer theatrical windows than Wonder Woman 84 held in as best they could during a pandemic with Universal's Crudes, uh, Crudes 2, still don't know why that exists, with 1.8 million, a 19% drop, in weekend number seven with $36.8 million. Universal's News of the World with tw with 1.24 million in Weekend 3, a total of 7.1 million. Uh, Monster Hunter, which is a fantastic movie. I highly recommend it. Actually, no, I'm thinking of something else. Not Monster Hunter. I have not seen Monster Hunter yet. What is it? I'm seeing Love and Monsters. Love and Monsters is fantastic. Monster Hunter was the one that got kicked out of China because there was a so-called offensive reference when in reality, when you look at the co comment, you're like, wait, what? This is offensive to you? Get over it. And that one has made $1.1 million here domestically. Uh, 7.8 million, rather, for total, sorry, 7.8 million total, 1.1 for this weekend. And then Fatal, weekend four, fifth place, 670,000. Yeah, it's not looking good. 
It's not looking good at all. You're going to see massive theater closures. When you have the economy locked down still for some damn reason, it's going to continue to get worse. But I just really honestly cannot quite understand how Anthony D'Alessandro can't get his head out of his ass for a second to just talk about the box office instead of blaming every single thing that could possibly ever potentially happen for why Wonder Woman's not working, why it's failing. You can only say the pandemic is the reason so far. When you bring up movies like Tenet, which made over $300 million during the midst of also the same pandemic with tons of theaters still closed as well, guess what? You can't just keep on making those excuses to say that that's the only reason why. Let's be honest here. That's a part of the reason. There's no doubt about it. But another part of the reason that y'all fail to want to talk about and recognize because you're access media and you don't want to piss off your overlords in the giant corporations like Warner Brothers and Disney is that this movie is just not very good. It's just not that great of a film. There's a lot of issues with the movie overall. They tried to do a little bit too much, and they tried to be a little bit too much on the nose with certain identity politics issues, and it is costing the film dramatically. Not to mention, even without those issues, it's still just a bad movie. You don't even need to mention the various elements and problems within the film, except to talk about how the story does not make any sense and how it's just not well put together. The fact that Patty Jenkins still has a Star Wars movie is disturbing to say the least. But when you have a film that's now in the red $221 million, and they've already said is not going to mirror that of Tenet, by the way, for those wondering... I decided to put the numbers in for Tenet as well, so I was not able to track this from the very beginning because it came out, as you saw, during the midst of a pandemic. But uh, Tenet cost $205 million, total $307.5 when you add in marketing. It made $362 million. It still lost $89 million. That's something that it can absolutely recover in Blu-ray, 4K sales, etc. down the line. That one might actually end up bidding close to, at the very least, breaking even, if not making a small profit. If you're not going to see a film do very similar, as they're saying, Wonder Woman 84 is not going to do similar numbers to Tenet, then that means that this film is going to, as I said in my projections, going to lose between 150 to $200 million. That's abysmal. That's more than just a pandemic. That's more than just the capital insurrection. The film also has to play a role in it. The problems with the film also has to play a role in it. And until you can start to admit that truth, you should honestly get out of the business at this point. But anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Honestly, I'm not that surprised to see them using any and every excuse to explain why this film is not doing very well. They seem to fail to recognize the the pure math and the pure numbers on this bad boy. And obviously, some are going to try and argue, but HBO Max numbers can make up for it. 150 to 200, 200 million dollars? I would have to see some very impressive subscriber numbers, which I just don't think are going to happen. But again, then again, maybe I'll be surprised. But what are your thoughts about this? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash the like button, smash the rumble button if you're watching over there. And again, check out links in the description to find out ways that you can help support the channel, where to follow me on social media. I'm on a plethora of different platforms now. My videos are also up on Odyssey now as well. So if you want to follow me on any of those other locations, that's not a big tech overlord like YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my January 2021 Patreon and Subscribe Star members. Albertus Magnus, Ali C83, Andrew Hoyle, Animation Commentator, Brian P, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, Hail to you, Father, Father Damian Cook, Garrett Searles, The Hunky Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, Itter Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jay, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Garney, Laura Story, Mike Jackson, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mr. Peabody, and his beautiful twin with the beautiful hair, Orange Hat Reviews, On to June, Out of Step with Reality, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B. Thank you very much for being my Patreon members. And also a huge shout out to my subscribe star peeps. Stand for John B, Perpetual Punster, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and ZK Man. You guys are all freaking amazing. Thank you so very much for being supporters. If you want your name shouted out, please consider joining on Patreon, where for a dollar a month, you can get your name shouted out at the end of every single video and live stream. For five dollars a month, you get access to that, and also you get access to exclusive giveaways, where I give away 4Ks, Blu-rays, digital codes, etc. Ten dollars a month will get you all that, plus also access to a special podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, 
lots of fun. We do Q&As from that as well, so you get access to asking those Q&As, asking us any wide variety of questions. And for $25 a month, you get all of that stuff, plus you get to be featured once a month on the Chosen of Valhalla live stream. And also for that first month, you get a free t-shirt shipped anywhere throughout the world. So if you want to consider any of those things, please check out the links in the description below where you can find my Subscribestar and Patreon and also other ways to support the channel. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.